If you've ever cooked a brisket that wasn't as juicy as you would have liked, well, it might not be your fault. It could have just been because you were really high in altitude. In this video, I'm traveling to the mountains brisket in hand to find out if altitude has any effect on the juiciness of brisket. So let's get smoking. I used to live in a city called Kelowna, which is at about a thousand feet above sea level. And when I moved to Calgary, where I live now, which is at about 3,500 feet above sea level, I noticed that my food tended to take longer to cook and it was also drier. Now, I thought I was just crazy and the people that lived at lower elevations like Texas were just better at cooking brisket than me. But there's actually some science to indicate that that's not necessarily the case. As you start increasing in altitude, a few things start happening. First, atmospheric pressure decreases, which means the boiling point of water also decreases. That means at sea level, you can take the temperature of your brisket up to a much higher temperature, up to 200 12 degrees Fahrenheit before that water starts to boil and your brisket starts to lose moisture very rapidly. But if you're at 6,500 feet above sea level, that means the boiling point of water is all the way down to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which means your brisket is leaking moisture like a screen bottom boat while those folks in Texas are happily cooking their briskets up to 212 while retaining all of that moisture. And it's not just the boiling point of water that matters. At a higher altitude, there's less atmospheric pressure and that means water evaporates more easily even well below the boiling point. So throughout the entire cooking process, you're losing more moisture than you would at a lower altitude. So all of this sounds reasonable, but how does the science hold up in reality? That's what I wanted to find out and that's why I wanted to do an experiment. But like any good experiment, this experiment needs a hypothesis. So here's my hypothesis. As altitude increases, a brisket will lose more moisture content. And in order to test that hypothesis, I need to change my elevation. So I'm heading to the mountains. I'm heading up to Mount Kid RV Park, which is about 5,000 feet above sea level. At this altitude, water boils at 203 degrees Fahrenheit. So it'll be perfect conditions to, to test what the effects of altitude have on brisket and compare it to where I live in Calgary at a lower altitude. And I'm here with my dad. Say hi, dad. How you doing, guys? <laughs> Go to my channel. Oh yeah, my dad has a channel as well, which I'll, I'll link right here. It's, it's really good, so go check it out. It's all about him traveling to Mongolia and, and traveling in later life and, and having a good time. So let's get to our Mount Kid RV Park in Kananaskis, Alberta, and we'll start the experiment. When we arrived, I planned to set up my Traeger to cook overnight, but bears are ever present in the Kananaskis area, and I didn't really feel like fighting off a thousand pound grizzly bear over a brisket, even though I totally could because I'm Canadian. And in addition to that, it started snowing really heavily, which would make setting everything up kind of difficult, so I decided to start first thing in the morning. Guys, before I get into that, I wanted to let you know that Meter is doing a collaboration with a company called True Local that I think you'll be really interested in if you live in Canada. True Local connects people to high-end, locally sourced meat products delivered right to your doorstep across Canada. They help you stock up your freezer, eat better, and support your local farmers and suppliers. Each package is vacuum sealed and and delivered free with dry ice so it stays frozen up to 72 hours and it's all locally sourced from farms and suppliers in your province. They focus on 100% grass-fed and finished beef, wild-caught fish, and a lot of other healthy options, which is great for me because I'm always trying to lose weight and I'm looking for leaner meats that also taste awesome. And to make it easy for you guys to get started, they are giving away one free sirloin tip roast with the purchase of a regular box product. So all you have to do is use the code METER on checkout and you can get yourself that free roast, which is an awesome deal. I'll link them in the description section below and just remember to use that code METER on checkout. So first thing in the morning, I prepped my brisket by cutting it in half and weighing the half of the brisket that I was going to test at the higher elevation of 5,000 feet. I'm using some Uncle Tim's all-purpose seasoning on this brisket along with some kosher salt and black pepper and granulated garlic. Uncle Tim's seasoning is a great seasoning on brisket. I'm really glad that he sent me some to try out. If you guys want to try it out, it's delicious. I'm going to link it in the description section below so you guys can check it out and get some for yourself. After rubbing the brisket, I put it on the Traeger in a foil boat with 250 mils of beef stock in it. Then I inserted a probe into the point, into the flat. I tested the wet bulb and the dry bulb temperature to measure relative humidity. And I also had a probe measuring the foil boat water temperature and the surface temperature of the brisket. 
All of this using my Thermalworks signals. Then I smoked it for four hours at 175 degrees Fahrenheit just to really allow it to get some smoke. And then I cranked it up to 225 degrees Fahrenheit for a really long time while I waited for it to climb out of the stall. So with all that time on my hands, I had quite a bit of time to spend with my dad, which was really cool. This was a really important trip for me because ever since I've become a dad myself, I've really been trying to make an intentional effort to be there for family. I spend a lot of my 20s and 30s prioritizing work over family, and now my goal is to change that and become what I call the oak tree of the family. Someone who's always there as a force of stability for friends and family, and someone who has an intentional plan to connect with and enrich the lives of his family through words, actions, and great barbecue. That's my vision going into the next chapter of my life. Steve, I got you one treat. I got you some Mongolian milk tea that, that is actually tastes just like the Lomantic Mongolian herders Wait, have what? They had. Mongolian milk tea? Mongolian milk tea. So is, this from, you, is this from Mongolia? It's from Mongolia. You show the, here's the package. Okay, we got a special package for you. Well, how is there milk in it? It's powdered. It's all curd powder. Curd powder? Curd powder. No, watch yourself. It's just, it's powdery, so I don't want to spill over you. Make well, sure it's I'm, right over. I'm lactose intolerant, so is this lactose friendly? It, it will be, trust me. All right, you gotta let it like steep or anything? Uh, no, just stir it up till you feel it. Yeah, now, I got extra hard curds I brought back from Mongolia, but that is the traditional milk tea. Extra hard curds? Yes, they, what they do is they... Steve, what is best in life? Cook low and slow, proper tenderness, and hear the lamentations of the brisket! Hear the lamentations of the brisket! After about 13 hours total, the brisket finally started to climb out of the stall. So I foiled it and I cranked it up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit to finish it. I took it all the way up to around 203 degrees Fahrenheit. It actually didn't get any higher than that because it couldn't because the boiling point of water at this altitude is 203 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I rested it for two hours. I waited again and I jotted down some tasting notes. Then it was time to head back to Calgary to do the second test at a lower elevation of 3,500 feet. For the second test, I did everything the same, same cooker, same temperature, same technique. The only difference was that I was at 3,500 feet instead of 5,000, so a drop of about 1,500 feet. Now here are the results comparing both of the tests. For weight, both briskets lost an equal amount of weight, 39%. So that surprised me because I thought the higher altitude brisket would lose more moisture weight, but it looks like it didn't. As for taste, in the taste tests, both briskets tasted relatively the same and had the same juiciness and tenderness. The only real difference was that the flat of the one cooked at a lower elevation in Calgary, it tasted a little bit more pot roasty and crumbly than the high altitude brisket. And I think this is because I went up to a little bit higher of a finishing temp on that flat of about 205 degrees plus, as opposed to the one that I cooked at a higher elevation and to only 203 degrees Fahrenheit. And as for liquid evaporation, when I wrapped the high altitude brisket, it had almost no liquid left in the foil boat, which really surprised me. Compared to the lower altitude brisket that I cooked in Calgary, which was filled to the brim with liquid when I wrapped it. Very distinct difference, which suggests that the water was evaporating much more quickly for the high altitude brisket. As for cooking time, the high altitude brisket stayed in the stall much longer. That is to say it stalled at around 153 degrees Fahrenheit and it took much longer to reach 170 before I finally wrapped it and raised the temperature to 250 to finish it off. And the high altitude brisket also took much longer to cook with a total cook time of 14.5 hours compared to the lower altitude brisket, which finished 2.5 hours faster with a total cook time of 12 hours. So did I prove my hypothesis? Does brisket get drier as altitude increases? Well, yes, but there's an easy way to prevent it. The main thing I found in this experiment is that it definitely takes much longer to cook a brisket at higher elevation. It stays in the stall longer, most likely due to the increased rate of evaporation at higher altitude, and it takes longer to finish because the max temperature it can reach near the end of the cook is constrained by the lower boiling point at higher altitudes. So if you left a brisket unwrapped for the entire cook at a higher altitude, you would probably get a really dry brisket because it would take a really long time to cook and all of that extra cooking time would really dry the brisket out. But you can avoid this easily by simply wrapping your brisket in foil during or after the stall and most importantly, adding some liquid into the wrap 
before you wrap it so the brisket has moisture to reabsorb. So in summary, if you're smoking brisket at a higher altitude, then add some liquid into the wrap and wrap it during or after the stall. Personally, I like to wrap it right at 170 degrees because that's when I know that it is just starting to come out of the stall. If you guys wanna chat about more barbecue science or anything barbecue related, then consider joining my Patreon. I'll link it in the description section below. We're building a really cool community there where we're all committed to getting better at barbecue and you can get direct access to me and get all your questions answered on our private Discord chat server. So hope to see you there and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot, guys, and happy smoking. Oh, shit. I'm gonna hey, Dad, what are you doing with that duct tape there? I'm getting worried whenever you pick up duct tape. I can't find the uh, fitting that goes in here, so I had to get a temporary replacement so that I can do the sewer dump, and that connects onto the sewer connection. And you think that duct tape's going to hold up while you're draining sewage from Exactly. This? That's what duct tape's for. <laughs>